Good morning, everyone. It's so great to have all of you here today. We hope that you'll have a fantastic worship service. The, uh, the announcements for today are pretty much a review. The mission trip to Houston leaves in the middle of July. And if you put down a down payment, you'll be able to go. There are a few spots left. The ice cream social is August 1st, that afternoon and evening. Oh, and in your pews, there's these little cards for everyone that's visiting today. First time worshipers with us, there you go. Anyone that does that, you'll get mugged when we get done. It's not bad. We've got a mug, it's a coffee <coughs> mug, and it has all kinds of goodies in it and information about all the, all the missions of this church. Oh, vacation Bible school. It's in July. I believe it's right before that mission trip. So with that being said, would you stand and join us in our opening song? Please join me in the greeting prayer. Let us pray together. Lord, your word has been embraced with those of love and heal. Your word has been misunderstood, resulting in death and destruction. How have you so trusted us with your word when we use it to justify both love and hate for both violence and peace? Lord, we pray, speak to us more clearly. Give us ears to hear and hearts to accept your way. Amen.
Please join me in the opening prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow to the end. Give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I delight. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. As we have received your grace and love in Jesus Christ, let us share Christ's peace with one another. Amen. Your word, Lord, is eternal. It stands firm in the heavens. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth, and it endures. Your laws endure to this day, for all things serve you. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have preserved my life. Save me, for I am yours. Thanks for coming up. You're going to be greatly rewarded. <laughs> as long as I can stand up after we're done. OK, well, uh, this is really appropriate because I'm starting out with a mention of the good news, which your grandpa talked about last week during the children's sermon. And he had that magic book. Remember that? That it was white the first time through, then it was black and white the second time through, and then it was color the third time through. I've got to talk to him about how he did that magic. That was really cool. And he talked about the good news. Well, he even mentioned there was a good news Bible, which happens to be the Bible that I've used for the last 40 years of my life for my reading. It's just really easy reading. And since we have a Gideon guest today, I wanted to make the Bible the focus of the children's sermon. And since your grandpa mentioned the good news Bible last week, I wanted to use mine as the illustration. If you look at the Good News Bible, I put a paper in there, and this side is the Old Testament, and the narrow side, the smaller side, is the New Testament, and that paper divides the Old Testament and the New Testament, and you know, we sometimes forget how much bigger the Old Testament is in amount of text than the New Testament. Well, I'd like to take a lesson from the Old Testament and a lesson from the New Testament, and you're gonna be my helpers, and there will be rewards for people that are successful in this quiz. So here's something from the Old Testament in modern language. And I will give a Twizzler to the first person that tells me what that is. 
what that entire page is. And if it's one of the kids, they'll get the Twizzler. If it's an adult, you're going to take them the Twizzler. Oh. Ten Commandments. Those are the Ten Commandments in modern text language on the cell phone. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give a Twizzler to the first person who can interpret Commandment 1 as it's texted on the screen. I know it's kind of small. Sorry about that. You may have to turn around and look at your, your screen. Who can interpret that? No one before me, seriously. No one before me, seriously. How about commandment number two? Adults, you're in on this. Don't worship pictures or idols. Take that to the fine lady back there. How about commandment three? Now you got to say it correctly. No. no, oh my gods. You got that right. <laughs> How about commandment four? Now this is a tricky one. Okay, who's going to claim it? Raise your hand if you're going to claim it. Who's going to claim it? Okay, Darla, I'll repeat what you say. Yeah, because the Sabbath started out as Saturday. If you'd run that over to Darla, she gets her Twizzler. See, normally we have the kids go out and get money from the congregation, but this time I figured we should have the kids deliver some candies to the congregation. Okay, this next one, I had to look up online to see what that one really said. Number five. I might get the Twizzler on this one. Mom and you, your, your mom and dad are cool is the last part. Okay, I'm going to get this one. Parents over shoulder, okay. Your mom and dad are cool. So I'll put that one in my pocket. <laughs> Number six, that's an easy one. You better jump in there. Don't kill people. Don't kill people. The next one will whisper. It's got a little bit of uh, raciness in it. Sex only with mate. Sex only with mate. Darla gets another one. The next one. Don't steal. And I think I'll give the Twizzler right here. And number nine. Don't lie. Or best friend, boyfriend, Let's give that to Dave. And this, the long one, number 10. Who said it? Take that over there to Beth. <laughs> and then the two little uh, extras that are not actually part of the Ten Commandments, but we will give Twizzlers if you get each one of those. I had to look this one up too on the TTYL. Totally. You would think totally, but it's not. What? Talk to you later, Jehovah. Give that to your mother. <laughs> and the last one. What does PS mean though? Postscript. Take that to the fine young lady with the green top. Okay, so I thought it was good to look at the modern version of the Ten Commandments. Because you know when I was a kid, it's so different than when you guys were kids right now. Um, we might see the Ten Commandments posted in the hall of a school. We might have saw the Ten Commandments posted in the hall of a courthouse. We might have saw the Ten Commandments on a monument in front of the courthouse. We actually saw the Ten Commandments in public places. And that's like against the law now. So I wanted you guys to know how much it's changed. 
that the Ten Commandments were really recognized in that format right there as the foundation of behavior in our society. Now, the Ten Commandments are perfect because they reflect the nature of God and God's will for us, but we're not perfect, which kind of creates some problems. You see, if you look at the Ten Commandments as they were originally given to Moses, there's a lot of don't, 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 don't. And so sometimes the Ten Commandments get a bad, a bad connotation because it's like, don't do this, don't do that, and there's a fear factor and there's punishment. And that's not really um, revealing the total nature of God. Sure, God's going to punish, and he's just when, when things are wrong, but that's not the only thing that God is. So in the New Testament, somebody came to trick Jesus. Some of the Pharisees came to trick Jesus, and they said, Lord, Master, what's the greatest commandment? Because they knew he couldn't give a correct answer, because those are all perfect from God the Father. But Jesus is so wise. What he did is he gave the answer that summarized all Ten Commandments. So all Ten Commandments are the greatest commandment. He said, next slide please, love the Lord your God with your whole body, mind, and soul. So that's shown the first four commandments in summary. And love your neighbor as you love yourself, which summarizes the last six commandments. So Jesus was pretty wise. In fact, he's perfectly wise. And in my thinking, you know, when I think of uh, the greatest commandment, and as a teacher, the way I would do a little bit of religious instruction in a public school is the first day I would say to the kids, we're going to treat others the way we would want to be treated. And that's the golden rule which summarizes the commandments. So thanks for coming up. Remember that in the good news, God's nature is revealed to us and his perfection is revealed to us. And we fall short of that. And we don't have to try to be good out of fear. We don't have to try to be good out of duty. We simply have to accept God's love and then we see that we live out the Ten Commandments or the greatest commandment a whole lot better. Let's bow our head for a prayer. Lord, uh, thanks for these youngsters coming up, even some of the ones that have graduated from high school to help out. They're great kids. I know that they have you in their heart, and by having you in their heart, they will live a life that honors you and reveals your nature to the world. Amen. Hebrews 11.3, <clears throat> by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. How many times do I have to sign to be saved? My friend Roger is a Gideon. His father was not a believer. Many times Roger gave his father the Gideon New Testaments. When his father became gravely ill, Roger went to visit him in the hospital. As he was preparing to leave, he offered his father another New Testament. And his father looked up from the hospital bed and said, how many times do I have to sign to be saved? In the back of every Gideon New Testament is a declaration page where if someone believes they can sign and date. There are also are helps that explain the plan of salvation. In the front of all of our Bibles um, is an index 
of problems that you can encounter in life and the scriptures that relate to them. As Gideons, we're born again business and professional men. We belong to local churches like this one. We are dedicated to telling people about Christ by sharing Bibles and New Testaments. We're known worldwide for our work in hotels, but we also do jails, prisons, schools, colleges, hospitals, and medical offices. To date, we have placed over two and a quarter billion scriptures. A million Bibles are distributed every four days in the United States. And with support from churches like this one, that will continue. Gideons partner with churches anywhere to reach the lost everywhere. Uh, can we have the video now? journey for me toward a life of obedience to Christ, because it is the word of God that transforms lives. As you saw in the video, God's word does change lives. It leads people to faith in Christ. These new Christians grow and they use their scriptures to share their faith with others. We focus on distributing complete Bibles, New Testaments, and portions of scripture. We like to put these in the hands of individuals. We also place them in locations where we know those who need the word of God will be able to pick them up. We have 99 languages. Um, in Isaiah 55, 11, God assures us his word will not return void. 
I came to accept Christ personally after reading Romans and 1 Corinthians on a night when I had attended a gospel meeting. The truth and power of the word of God struck me, and I not only knew that I was a sinner, I knew that God loved me, and that he had sent his son to live and die for me, and to rise again to be Lord of my life. I'm a Gideon today because I've experienced a changed life for eternity. We're blessed to have the word of God. And as you saw in the video, again, it changes lives. Gideon see this repeatedly. And the testimony is usually, I read the word of God and believed and was changed. But it goes beyond just salvation. God wants each of us in his word to continue changing and empowering us. I would like to make some observations on a few verses which I hope will be concepts that encourage you in your walk. Luke 8, 21. But he answered them, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. Luke eleven twenty eight, Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Acts 12, 24, but the word of God increased and multiplied. 1 Thessalonians 2, 13, and we also thank God constantly for this, that when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as the word of men, but as what it really is, the word of God, which is at work in you believers. The process is simple. Read, do, and keep. And the word of God will work in us and will be increased and multiplied. Everything in the universe comes from the word of God. Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. God's greatest desire is to see us born again by his living and abiding word. 2 Peter 3.5 The word of God created what is seen, the word, but by the word of God the earth was formed. Through the living and abiding word of God you were born again, not of things perishable, but imperishable. Creating everything didn't complete God's plan. So in John 1 we read, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So after making everything, he became a man to redeem creation and give us eternal life. God becoming man makes him knowable and understandable. When we get to heaven, we will not see God dwelling in unapproachable light. I mean, we will, but to the right of the throne will be the Son of God, who will have a face. And as I look out at you, I can recognize you because of your faces. We will one day have the same ability with God's Son because of what he did for us. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living, and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the vision of the soul and the spirit, of joints and of marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God chose to reveal himself by giving us his word. And as I said, our part is simple. Read, do, and keep. 
We can't obey unless we know what he wants. And we get that by reading the word. And, and as I've mentioned, it's alive and active. I hope each one of you is reading their Bible regularly. I hope my words today are an encouragement to each of us to be in the Word. And when we read, to expect God to reveal himself to us. By reading, we can know how to obey. By obeying, we can grow in our faith and be conformed to Christ's image. The more we are like him, the better we can glorify God and enjoy him. I would like to tell you that by trusting God, your life will be perfect. No wants, no troubles, no problems. But that simply is not true. But I can promise you, the better you know God, the easier it will be to endure trials when they come. My life verses summarize the theme that I've been sharing with you. In Isaiah 43, 1 and 2, it says, But now, thus says the Lord, who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor, for the, nor shall the flame scorch you. We're created and formed by the Lord. We have no fear because he redeemed us. We're known by our names. But I want to emphasize the last verse in what I just shared. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor the flames scorch you. When a friend shared these verses with me, he said, what does it say? And I said, it says the Lord will be with me. And he says, yeah, that's true. He says, but it also begins with the word when, not the word if. We're to expect trials. And if we're near the Lord, he'll uphold us in them. The best way to live in Christ is to be in his word so that we're able to live without fear and be prepared for the fire and the water when they come. I spent much of the last four years since I was here last barely able to walk. I can testify to the peace and joy that the Lord provides. I want you to be able to do the same when trials come. I have a practical tool for you. It's simple as A, B, C. I suggest you read the word in sections. The size of the portion really doesn't matter. It's whatever you're comfortable with. As you read, the A is analyze. Look at the passage and think about what it says. Once you've decided what it says, we go to B, which is pick the best verse. It's amazing how many times you read a passage of scripture, think about it, and one verse either summarizes it or jumps off the page at you. Um, and then we come to the hard part, at least for me, and that's the C. That's commitment. Many times the Lord will direct us to action. We need to decide what the passage is doing and commit, what the passage is telling us and commit to doing it. I think this simple ABC, analyze best verse and commitment will not only improve your understanding of the scripture, but your commitment will cause you to grow in faith. Read the word and expect it to work in you.
This is the point where I hope you're wondering how you can help with the Gideon ministry. The first thing that I would ask you to do is pray. It's the most important thing, I think, in the ministry. Particularly, I would ask you to pray for the Gideons in Iowa and for our camp in Dubuque, but also the worldwide distributions. We've been able to give the incoming freshmen at UD a New Testament every year for the last three years, and we're on track to do it again this fall. The amazing thing is when we ask, can we do this? The feedback we got from the administration at UD was, yes, we want every student on this campus to hear the gospel. We were just amazed and continue to be amazed. For several years, we've been able to give New Testaments to the NICC graduating nursing classes. As funds become available, we do sidewalk distributions. We just did Washington Junior High in Dubuque last month. We'd love to do distributions in Manchester. Pray that we would come to know the Lord from being given his word to read. If you're a business or professional man and would like to share putting the word of God in people's hands, locally and internationally, I would invite you to talk to me after the service and learn more about being a Gideon. We also have a group now called Friends of Gideons, where you can join and support us in prayer, and if you're led financially, and get regular updates from the Gideons about the ministry. Our camp is small. Please pray that the Lord would call more Gideons. And I'm praying particularly some here from Manchester, whether this congregation or one of the other churches that we that we touch. You can learn more from your bulletin insert. Um, I also have a sheet that has our websites on it. Um, the Gideon web, the main Gideon website will take you to everything else, but this is a kind of a direct route. If you have a smartphone, Android or iPhone, we have an app. This app will put the Bible in your phone for free with 158 languages. We have the word of God to go around the world. If you point someone to this app, they can take it into any country in the world. Um, and it's a lot easier to distribute these than it is Bibles. Some of the Bibles are even audio files. So if you're driving in your car, you can play the scripture and listen. We also have a, pro <clears throat> excuse me, a program of expression cards. We have these for almost any occasion that you can think of. Um, the cards are free. It's very simple. Um, using the card, um, you can designate how many scriptures you would like placed in honor of whatever the occasion. And then you make a donation to cover the cost of the scriptures. Um, the website for the cards is on the slip that I have if you're, if you're interested. Um, I think there's a card rack here, but our camp is having a terrible time keeping them full. I mean, we, we kind of now wait for the churches to say, we need more cards. And I forgot to check with Pastor Phil about your inventory, uh, but I will. Um, the last thing is giving. 93% 
of the money given to Gideons go to the purchase and placement of scripture. Um, if you feel led, we would appreciate you doing that. We have 99 languages in hard copy Bibles that go into all, over 200 countries. Um, in the bulletin insert, there is an envelope and at the exits, there are baskets if you would like to contribute something today or take the envelope home and mail it in later. Thank you. may be seated. That brings me to the time where we talk about the prayers of the people. And I believe 
we start with the list of people that's in the box in that program. I would ask you to pray for Darla and I this week. We start with all six grandkids middle of this afternoon. <laughs> all six will be here till Tuesday. And Jacoby goes home, and the rest of the week we've got five. The next week we get a break. Alyssa will be taking driver's education, so be careful. <laughs> With that being said, what else shall we pray for? Any others? With that being said then, bow your heads and we'll pray together. Dear God, maker of everything, all powerful, all loving, all healing, with you in our heart, we pray that everyone will be directed down that path that's narrow, but that's where you meet Jesus and go to heaven forever, as long as you believe. Special, special, compliment, special compliments for Don and his wife. He's doing fantastic. I visited him on Tuesday and he couldn't stand on that. It couldn't endure the pain. With that being said, amen. And would the ushers come forward to do this morning's offering? In the doxology.
Precious God, Lord Jesus, bless these offerings and help them come to fruition through all the ministries of this church and others that we haven't even thought of yet. Thank you for your love. It is absolutely enormous. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be to thee. Remain standing and join me in this closing hymn, please. It's been my joy and privilege to be here. The first time I saw this building, I was inspired. I think this is one of the neatest worship spaces I've ever been in. And I appreciate the opportunity that you've given me to share with you today. I appreciate the fact that I know the word of God is going forth from this place. So my prayer is that this week, each of us draws one step closer to the Lord. Each of us is one step closer to having the peace and joy that he wants us to have. 
God bless you all. Thank you.